Hey guys, this is Jared from Transformational Coaching. Action is transformation. Guys, in this video, I'm gonna get into the four different types of leadership styles, the four different types of managerial styles that will allow you to flourish as a manager or as a leader. I'm gonna walk through each one of them and, and describe them briefly, and then finally I'll share with you one of the biggest tasks or hardships that every manager and leader has to learn how to balance in order to be effective at their job and at their work. So, what are the first four? Number one, the autocratic style of leadership and management. What does that mean, autocratic? Simply, it means that the managers and leaders are are operating like dictators. They go around, they tell the workforce what to do, they kind of bully their, their employees, they use fear, intimidation, and anger in order to make things happen. Now, that can get t tasks done and that can get jobs done, however, it doesn't have a health, it doesn't place a healthy emphasis on relationships. When there isn't a healthy emphasis placed on relationships, then tasks are done, but they're not done effectively or wholeheartedly. And I'll get into that a little bit more in near the end of the video. The autocratic style of management is the least preferred style of management out there. Yet a lot of people use it because it's more of a lower state of consciousness. They just don't know that there are other forms of effective leadership. Number two, the paternalistic style of leadership and management. This one is where the leader or manager acts more like a father. He looks out for his employees. He sees how they're doing. He's always tapped into what's going on for them. And he's kind of instructing and leading them on. However, he is still stern with them. He's still firm. He still says what you can and can't do. However, he gives you a little bit more freedom to explore. This is a this is a better way than the autocratic style because you allow more autonomy with your workforce and with your employees. Your employees don't view coming to work as being a burden because they know they're not going to be yelled at or mistreated. They know that if something goes wrong that the, 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 the managerial leader or whoever is in that paternalistic role will be able to step up their game and say, hey, you know, something's really wrong here, uh, the employees aren't happy, how can we help them out? So they know that they have an advocate when they come in to work. Number three, the democratic style of leadership. This form of leadership allows individuals to come forward and to share their, com their most common concerns, gripes, and grievances. So the managers sit back, they take in their two cents, they see what's going on in the workforce and with their employees, and they ask their employees, hey, how can we make this better? What's going on here? What are some of the issues that you guys are having? What are you happy with? How can we make this the most beneficial situation for getting what we need to get done, but also for you guys as well? In this style of leadership, employees feel cared for, and because they feel cared for, they're gonna show up more wholeheartedly and work. When we feel valued and when we feel cared for as human beings, we like to work for the people who show us value. We give them value back. You have to give value in order to get value. So as a manager, when you give value and, and acknowledge and, and appreciation to your workforce or the employees, they're gonna work harder for you in return. And finally, number four, Walker managers. Walker managers, according to Daniel Goleman, the famous social psychologist who's written a numerous amount of books on social organization, social psychology, and management, he says this is the most effective form of leadership and management. Why? Because you're a part of the community. Walker managers are literally walking around engaging with the workforce all the time. They're always interactive. They don't look at themselves as above or below. They look at themselves as an integral part of the team and community. Now, they manage manage things, they say, hey, this needs to be done, this needs to happen this way, but they're constantly engaged. They place an equal emphasis on relationship and tasks. And those are the two things that I want to talk about now that are really key for every manager and anyone in a leadership position to recognize. You have two things that you need to worry about and that need to be held in perfect equal balance if you want to be the most effective managerial leader you can be. Being a manager means having a having an equal amount of dedication and commitment to getting the tasks done that need to be done, but also the same amount of, of building up relationships and rapport with the people who are going to get those tasks done. When these two are in equal alignment with each other, everything happens and everything flows. When you focus on the relationships with people in your workforce and your employees, 
they're going to be motivated to work for you. The more that you show you care for them, that, that you value them, that you value their input and what they have to say and share, the more they're going to show up for you. So all those tasks, a lot of people think that they can use fear, intimidation, and anger like in that more ocratic style of leadership. You can use that to get tasks done, but those tasks aren't going to get on time. It's going to be very frustrating. There's going to, it's going to be high stress. You want to bring it right in the middle. How can you balance that, those two out? How can you place an equal emphasis on relationships and an equal emphasis on getting the jobs done? When you place a, an equal emphasis on both of these things, then everything that you need to do will, will work for you and happen because those people will want to work harder for you. They'll want to get these tasks done for you because they feel acknowledged, they feel appreciated, and they feel cared for. And that's incredibly important to cultivate in a work environment. That's all I got for this time, guys. This is Jared Bull from Transformational Coaching, Action is Transformation. Guys, if you want to check out, I also have a free video lesson on my five secrets of transformation in the link down below. I'll see you soon.